and Drew Sutcher. All right, we've concealed this identity long enough. It's about time we let you in on the secret. Time Out the Dog is really... Me. All right, Terry, thanks for spending time with us. You're out of here. I've heard enough from you. <laughs> thanks always, a lot, Drew. Always wanted to throw someone out of a sports cast. I'm Drew Soysher with the Bulldogs at the College World Series in Omaha, Nebraska. Join me for complete coverage as Fresno State shoots for its first national championship tonight on Eyewitness News. Red owner Marge Schott signed an endorsement contract today. Well, uh, actually, she co-signed for her dog, Shotzi, who's going to have his picture on boxes of dog food in grocery stores. Details of the deal were not made available, although Shotzi is expected to demand renegotiation if the San Diego chicken gets more money from KFC. The accident. It happened here at the State Capitol building in Sacramento back in August of 1988. Fonts and his family were on vacation when he fell three stories to the basement, landing on his head. He was comatose for two and a half months, and then, less than one year later, back on the track. And now it's time for our weekly feature, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television, the Drew Boo. Oh, I'm sorry, I misread that recognized around the studio as the leader in sports television. Now, if you won 15 out of 16 games and were named College Player of the Year, all while using the exact same baseball glove, why in the world would you even consider changing it just before the College World Series? Even if it does look like this. Wow. They'll shoot for 16 straight tonight at Baltimore. The big league record for consecutive victories is 26 by the 1916 New York Giants. Still fits, huh? Oh, good. In my mind, I'm gone to Carolina. Yee-haw! The Texas Rangers have won 14 ball games in a row. A is Fresno Pacific College, B is Sonoma State, and C is Fresno State. Fresno Pacific College beat Sonoma State. Sonoma State beat Fresno State last year. So by the transitive property, if Fresno Pacific played Fresno State, Fresno Pacific would win. Simple math. And now it's time for our weekly feature, delivered as always from a seated position because I've fallen and I can't get up. The Drew Boo. All of this raises a rather interesting question. If you spend half your day riding bikes, where do you find time for books? Well, no need to waste a couple of bucks on the National Enquirer. We've got all the gossip you need right here on 47 Sports Sunday. Did you hear the latest on Oakland A's outfielder Jose Canseco? Yeah. This is great stuff. <laughs> the New York Post published two photographs of big number 33 standing outside Madonna's New York apartment late Thursday night. The newspaper reported Canseco arrived about 11 o'clock and left two hours later. Sure, Madonna was nowhere to be seen, but Jose admits he did it, although he says it was totally innocent. Just stopped by to say hello. We'll have details of Ricky Henderson's alleged love affair with Prince next week right here on 47 Sports Sunday. You too can become a bleacher creature. There are only two prerequisites. You have to look stupid and you have to act stupid. I can do both. Payne Stewart and 1987 champ Scott Simpson, who for the second straight day led by two strokes with three to play and suddenly hit the ball more like Homer Simpson than Scott Simpson. I've got the best seat. Bulldogs are really out for blood. You got that right. The uh, Bulldogs are thinking about revenge tonight. They're planning on taking the New Mexico State Lobos to school. There's a history lesson beginning in about 45 minutes. It's important to remember what happened, isn't it? Yeah, that's true. That's why we study history, I guess. <laughs> Bulldogs have very good memories. It's a fake, and it's wide open. This is going to go for the Lobos. I don't think they can forget that. I mean, they got beat. It ended a 17-game uh, winning streak, the longest in the nation. It knocked us out of the top 20. I don't think they can forget that, but I'll tell you, and I'll promise you, okay, on fourth and one, they're not thinking about that. They're thinking of who to block. Last year's loss at New Mexico ruined FSU's perfect season. We're going to go into this game mad. 
you know, because, you know, we're picking a bone right now. There's no chip on the shoulder, but we're picking a bone. You know, it's a bone thing going on, <laughs> a dog bone. <laughs> With the exception of Fresno State, the Big West Conference continues to look more like the big worst. Long Beach, UNLV, and San Jose have all been beaten already today. Meanwhile, UCLA picked up right where they left off, losing. Oklahoma beat them today 34-14, despite a two-yard touchdown dive by Hanford High School's Sean Wills. The Bruins are hoping to avoid their first back-to-back -back losing seasons in 27 years. From the top 10, number one Miami and Brigham Young are tied at seven apiece. Eighth-ranked Tennessee destroyed Mississippi State. Same story, Nebraska 60, Northern Illinois 14. Virginia beat Clemson by a couple of touchdowns. It was Ladies' Day at the U.S. Open Tennis Tournament in Flushing Meadow, New York, where Argentina's Gabriela Sabatini shocked defending champion Steffi Graf to win her first Grand Slam title. She beat her in straight sets by scores of 6-2 and 7-6. That snapped Steffi's U.S. Open winning streak at 20 matches. It's very hard for me to talk right now. Uh, I don't know, I, I just can't believe that I won this tournament. It, I, I've been dreaming a lot to, to win it, and uh, I can't believe this came true. For the first time in 11 years, there's an All-American final on the men's side because Andre Agassi of Las Vegas, serving in the far court, came from behind this morning to beat defending champion Boris Becker of West Germany in four sets. Andre is off to the U.S. Open final for the very first time. I'm going to come out here tomorrow just shooting my guns. And, uh, you know, the, fortunately, the person in the finals on the other side is, is going to be just as excited to be there as me. That person Andre is referring to is 19-year-old Pete Sampras of Rancho Palos Verdes. He knocked off John McEnroe in four sets today and could become the youngest U.S. Open champion in history. Unbelievable shot by Sampras. Wow. Just a few games on the afternoon baseball menu, including one in San Francisco where the Giants beat the Astros in 10. Matt Williams homered in the fourth and then again in the 10th to win it. Meanwhile, at Yankee Stadium in New York, the A's are trying to make it a perfect 11 for 11 with the Yanks. They've beaten them all 10 times so far this year, but trail tonight's game 2-1 to one in the fifth. The Fresno State soccer team suffered their first defeat today on the road. The Air Force Academy beat them at Colorado Springs by a final score of 3-2. to two. A bit closer to home, the Bulldog water polo team opened its season today by hosting a four-team tournament. Bad news, they lost all three of their games, including a 10-9 heartbreaker with number three, Stanford. But the big show tonight in town, of course, is right here at Bulldog Stadium, where New Mexico will try to break FSU's 17-game home winning streak. This place is uh, starting to fill up a little bit, so I think I'm going to go grab a seat and make myself comfortable. We're live at the Doghouse. I'm Drew Soysher. Gene, back to you. All right. Thanks a lot, Drew. Fresno State's Ron Cox has decided to enter his name in the National Football League draft. The Bulldog linebacker debated back and forth and concluded it makes a whole lot of dollars and cents. You go to college to make money, you know, and I got the opportunity to make money early, you know, and I still come back and finish my degree, so I'm going to take the opportunity now and just go start my living right now. Ron Cox has been bleeding Bulldog Red for three years now, and he'd like to see some NFL green in return. He stiff arms one man. He's trying for the corner. Ron Cox wants to be rich, and if football experts are correct, he will be. The average NFL first-round draft choice makes more than $500,000 a year. You know, being rich is not everything. You know, I, I mean, a person, you know, you got to be happy. Cox is happiest making quarterbacks miserable. He now hopes to fulfill a lifelong dream of doing just that in the National Football League. I was eight years old talking about playing, you know, playing in pros, you know. But, uh, you know, I, um, that's been a lifetime goal. I want money. I want money. I wanna be rich. Yeah. <laughs> I heard that. You crazy. Yeah. I heard that song. Yeah. It's got a good ring to it, doesn't it? Yeah, it's a good ring to it. Ron Cox wants to be rich, and who can blame him?
Well, not that it's any of our business, but we did find a Fresno State love connection on the ball diamond this Valentine's Day. Just when you thought 47 Sports Sunday was hurting for romance, think again. We set him up, we knock him down, Valentine's Day. Well, I got a note on my car. <laughs> it said, uh, good luck on the game. Number 45, love number 45, and I'd never been to a softball game, and I didn't know who number 45 was. Number 45 is Terry Carpenter, Mike's girlfriend of almost two years now. She pitches for the Fresno State softball team. He hits for the baseball team. Funny Valentine, huh? Have you pitched to him? Yeah, one time, but we didn't have a catcher or anything, so we don't count that. What happened? I took her knee <laughs> <laughs> off no. the right center field wall. No. Me and you, you and him, him and her, us and them. We keep score, love is war, Valentine's Day. Mike and Terry couldn't spend Valentine's Day together. She had afternoon practice, his was at night. Quality time is tough to come by this time of year, and that's not all. All my life, I never thought I'd have a girlfriend who was a better athlete than me, and it's tough. Mike and Terry haven't made wedding plans just yet, but they have discussed it. There's a more important score to settle first. He hit it, but I wasn't, I didn't have a catcher, and I wasn't throwing anything. I was just throwing it right to him, so. Yeah, I didn't have batting gloves, and I didn't have pine tar. <laughs> Love is war. All is fair on Valentine's Day. We'll be back with more 47 Sports Sunday in just a moment.